And diving now into the legal and political fallout, I'm joined by former federal prosecutor Ellie Honig and ProPublica reporter Andrea Bernstein, who has long covered the former president. Welcome to both of you, and thanks for joining us. Ellie, we have to point out there's a lot we don't know yet, but let's start with what we do know. As Jeff Bennett reported earlier, Mr. Trump is expected to be arraigned on Tuesday. There is a whole process. Walk us through what happens and when we should expect more details on the indictment itself. Sure, Amna. For all the hoopla and the circus-like atmosphere that's sure to envelop the courthouse on Tuesday, this will really be a fairly routine proceeding. Donald Trump will be led into the building, surely under tight lock and key, not handcuffed, to be clear. He will be fingerprinted. He will be mugshotted. The mugshot, by the way, is supposed to remain not public under New York law. Then he will come out for a court appearance. At that point, the indictment will be unsealed, meaning it will become available to us in the general public and the media. Donald Trump will then be advised of the charges against him. He will enter a not guilty plea. The judge will then release Donald Trump on bail, what we call released on his own recognizance, meaning leave him free to go and he just has to come back from the next court appearance. And then we will be underway. We will be into our court system under a case captioned people of the state of New York versus Donald J. Trump. Andrea, defense attorney for Mr. Trump, Joe Tacopina, said Mr. Trump was shocked by the indictment, also that he is, quote, ready to fight. What does that say to you? Well, Trump's lawyers have been attacking a potential indictment for weeks now. They've been saying the case is weak. Uh, they've been saying it's unprecedented. Of course, it's hard to tell because we haven't actually seen an indictment. We haven't seen any charges. We haven't. We have no indication of the evidence that the DA has uh, put forward in this case. So all of that is yet to be learned. We will begin learning on Tuesday uh, when the indictment is unsealed. Uh, but of course, it'll take uh, many months of uh, the trial proceedings to, and probably the trial itself, to really understand the full dimensions of this case. Ellie, as Jeff reported, those security preps in New York are beginning. We've heard some of the language from Mr. Trump and his supporters in the past. The idea of political violence in this case is not a hypothetical. We've seen what happens when some of his supporters have followed his instruction in the past. Can he be prevented from inciting violence in this case? So there is a way at an extreme where a judge can impose what we call a gag order, mean, meaning issue an official court order prohibiting a participant in a trial from speaking. That is a very high bar legally. Now, any participant in the justice system has the right to criticize a judge or a prosecutor. It's not a great idea, but they do have that right. However, I believe there are lines here that already have been crossed in the way that Donald Trump has launched attacks, including racist attacks, including attacks not so subtly calling for violent resistance. And so I do think we could get to a point fairly quickly where the prosecutor needs to go to the judge and say, judge, it's an extreme measure. We rarely do it, but we need a gag order in this case. We're not there yet, but it's something the prosecutor has to be thinking about. Now, Andrea, you've been following this case very, very closely. We do not know the details of that indictment yet, but knowing it is related to those hush money payments uh, involving an alleged affair with Mr. Trump, what could potential charges look like in this case? So the discussion has centered around falsification of business records, which in New York can be an e-felony, punishable with jail time of up to four years now. Of course, that uh, infrequently is applied in these kind of white-collar cases. But it is a felony in New York is a serious charge. And the allegation uh, and what the DA has been looking at is we know from Michael Cohen that he paid money to Stormy Daniels. We know from records that the prosecution in that case released that they were the the, that hush money payment was reimbursed uh, by Donald Trump uh, and that Trump's company referred to it as a legal retainer, which it was not. Uh, what is being investigated is Trump's alleged role in all of this. And by the fact that there's an indictment, it appears that the DA believes there is sufficient evidence to prove that Mr. Trump orchestrated this scheme of calling something a legal retainer that was actually, as Michael Cohen has described it, a sort of last-ditch effort, successful as Cohen described it, to save Mr. Trump's 2016 uh, election bid at that time. And of course, this all came out after the Access Hollywood tape. 
just when, within weeks of that. So that is the question that I think we will be seeing uh, be laid out in these legal procedures, is what did Mr. Trump do to keep this testimony from coming forward, and what kind of arrangements uh, did he make? So all of that remains a question, of course. And then before any of that happens, we certainly expect Mr. Trump's team to try to get the appeals courts in New York to throw out the indictment. So there will certainly be legal maneuvering in this case. Uh, starting uh, very quickly, I would imagine. A lot to cover, a lot we don't yet know, but we thank both of you for joining us today to explain all of that. That is Ellie Honig and Andrea Bernstein. Thank you to you both. Thank you.